Electricity and water don't go very well together. All right, everyone. Camilla, you're all here, all okay? All right, everybody. So, um, a couple of things I want to start off with um, before we begin. Um, let me just see what we can write here. A piece of paper. Just a sort of quick recap of what we've been doing, and that is this, this whole idea of these course of these five classes that we're doing is the idea of coming back to ourselves, coming back to God, rebuilding the name of God within us, which is the essence of tshuva, to shuv hey, okay. Returning the hay. What does returning the hay mean? The Zohar tells us that the name of God is Yud Hey Vav Hey. Okay? And the human being belongs to the last hay. That's that's what we belong to. That's the category we, we, we belong to. And because the human being, as opposed to any other part of creation, has the ability to oppose God's will. Okay, we have, the, we have the ability to sin, we have the ability to oppose, God, to oppose God's will, we have free choice in that way. Therefore, the hay, when, when we oppose God's will, the hay separates from yud hay God. So this is the inner meaning of when we do our mitzvah, and we say in order to unite the name of God, we're doing the mitzvah to unite and then there's different formulas. It might be to unite a Kodesh Boku Shechinte or Yehud Hashem or Yehud Hashem. Okay, this is what it actually means to unite the vessels of God, the, the first three, which are always in alignment with God, and the last one, which is the Malkut, which is us, can be kind of dropped off, okay, all due to our sins and to our um, turning our back. And so, therefore, we have the opportunity to re, re, reunite, to come again, to come closer, and to rebuild the name of God, which is what Teshuvah is. Okay, so we have Teshuv Hey, bringing back the name of God. So the purpose of these five classes overall is to look at the different ways in which we can be connected with God, and we can get separated from God, okay? And so we, what we've done so far is we've looked at one article from the Zohar on the meaning of tshuva. And last week we had a very interesting week about um, where our thoughts come from. Now all our thoughts come from God, in fact, and including the negative stuff, all right? And the question is, how do we respond to that? If a negative thought comes into our minds, if a negative thought comes into our hearts, a thought of rebellion, a thought of I don't want, a thought of blasphemy, a thought of, of, of one of those appetites that we're all gifted with, okay? Uh, uh, an angry thought, uh, 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 something, you know, a thought of hatred, okay? How do we relate to that? Where does free choice lie, in fact? Where, since all of those are coming to us from God, where is our choice? And our choice is actually, do I believe in God? Do I want to keep the Torah and mitzvot? Do I want to listen to the Moses within me, to the Moshe Rabbeinu within me? Or do I want to rebel? I want to be a Korah. I want to be a, a rebellion, a, a, a Dotan, an ugly one. Okay, we, we just had them recently, in the, the, the ones who quarreled with Moses. So this is the choice, where the, where the point of choice lies, okay? It's not what thoughts we think. We have no control over that whatsoever. All our thoughts come from God. We have no uh, uh, um, ability to decide what thoughts we're going to think. This comes from God, okay? Our choice lies in how we respond to that, okay? So we're going to look again at one of these articles of Rabbi Ashlag. I thought I'd bring the book this time. 
to show you where I'm getting where this material comes from. And it's called Hashem Shamati Shemeha, and um, it's popularly known as Shamati. And it's a collection of the old teachings of Rabbi Ashlag, okay, which were written down primarily by his son, but also by other students. They were, they were uh, uh, teachings that he gave at the Tish um, when um, on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Um, and so they had to be written down by memory after, Yom, after Shabbos and Yom Tov, obviously. Okay, and they did a fantastic job of, of writing these down. And they are a treasury of spiritual instruction because he was giving instruction to his Talmudin, okay? And it's a, a treasury of absolute, uh, you know, how to relate to the different issues that we come faced with in the practice of Torah and its laws. So I want to start off today, we're gonna to go over some of the material we did um, last week, but I want to start off today with a little piece um, from Likutei Maharan. Okay, and this is a, a piece uh, that, um, I'm so sorry, what? Yeah, the Eloi Nishmat, okay, thank you very much. Oh, wow, absolutely. Um, okay, the Eloi Nishmat Harav Elasa Mordechai Ben Harav Gedalia Aaron. Okay. And this is what is written for the new Kudem Haran. Gam tov lasot mi Torah tfila. It is also good to make from the Torah a prayer. So hainu, kishalomeit ushomea, eze ma'ama Torah mitzadi kaimit, Whenever we learn or we hear an article of Torah from a true tzaddik, and we need to make from this a prayer, all right? In other words, not to leave the Torah that we're learning as something informational, as something of um, information, as something that is interesting, or something that's... Uh, fascinating or something that fits in with some other information that we've heard. But to understand that this is a direct message which is coming to us from God, as we learned last week, okay? If he gave us the thought to come here and to sit and learn this Torah, then this Torah is intended for me personally, okay? This is a thought he's given me, all right? And therefore, to, I need to relate to it as a real thought. All right, and therefore I took to decide to make an action. How am I going to respond to this? And Rabbi Nachman here gives a suggestion, make from the Torah a tefillah, all right? To ask and to supplicate before him may be blessed. Regarding everything that we're learning in this particular piece of Torah, when will I also merit to come to this? All right, to actually really relate to the Torah personally. It's speaking to me. It's speaking to each one of us through our own heart and, and minds, okay, as an individual hashkaha pratit. This is how we need to relate to the Torah. Um, excuse me, it's a bit bothery. The Kama, the application. The Kama Rahok Mise, to feel how far away he is from this. The vacation of Toy Barash is a cave in the role of Colonel Marchand Botama. And to ask God that he should have the merit to come to everything that is stated in that whole ma'amal. And the one who is really taking this in and truly desiring, God will lead him in the way of truth. 
ויבין בעצמו דבר מתוך דבר איך להתנהג בזה. And he himself will then understand from within himself, like what we'll send in the thoughts, how to relate to this, how to behave subsequently as a consequence of the Torah that he's heard. באופן שהוא דבר דברי חן וטענות נכונות. So his words would be words of graciousness, of grace, okay? Of bringing him into infinity of form with the creator. To for God's pleasure. To bring him close to his service in truth. And this prayer that he makes goes to a very, very high place, consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Especially when he makes from the Torah his learning a prayer. From this, God gets great delight above. So I think that's really, really the place that I want to come to in my own learning. And this is the place that I want to share with you that the possibility arises, okay, that we can begin to see that God puts his thoughts into our minds, okay, and positive thoughts and negative thoughts, also Torah thoughts. The fact that we've come to learn Torah together is a thought that he's put into our minds, okay, and how do we respond to it? And this response of uh, Rabbi Nachman, I find amazing, okay, so that the, 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 the Torah should not be like just something that we, like a, you know, piece of information. Our world is filled with information. We don't need another bit of information. Okay, what we need is to take that Torah and transform it through our capacities. Everybody has very different channels, very different capacities, and to bring that through in some action. And when I say a prayer, everybody can find for themselves their own prayer. Okay, it doesn't have to be in Hebrew, whatever it is, it's, it's your prayer. Okay whatever way you feel you, you can express it. So sorry? Well, I'm awfully sorry, but I didn't note it down. It's called Yekutei Maran, but I'm sure I can find it for you. Okay. I, okay. I actually got this from a piece. I was looking up the origin of Rabbi Natan's prayers. Okay. Rabbi Natan, I don't know if you know, Yekutei, the three lot. Of Rabbi Nassim are really amazing. So where did he get this idea of doing the prayers, and where did he get this idea of, of and it was actually from this piece of Ma, of Mahavan. and that's why the Tfilot of Rabbi Nassim are actually connected with uh, Likutei Maharan, and in some editions you can find the source like that. Okay, so right, that was okay. So. This is the book that um, Shamati, the last piece that we learned, came from, and we didn't finish it at all. We only really started it. Okay. So today I want to go into the, what we did a little bit more deeply because there were a lot of questions which weren't answered. All right. So you'll forgive me if we go over some of it again. All right. But since it's um, the meeting all right, of God's thoughts with us, Okay, I, it, every time we come to it, it's different. We're different. So it's not information. So I think it's okay to go over things again sometimes. Um, I think the best thing to do is just begin again from the beginning of the article. All right, so it's Mama Aleph, the people are following in the, um, in the, in the books. It's not the one we think, it's not the first page, which is kind of just printed. It's a scan one um it looks like i think it's probably page two or something in the, in the, yeah page two okay here it looks like this everybody okay that's what it looks like all right okay he ne cut it's written in in volume an old mill for dough there is none other than him so the whole of what we talked about last time, that our thoughts come from God, okay, and we need to relate to them as coming from God, 
really also depends on our faith in God. All right. That's the that's the, the ground on which all of this stands. It depends on that we believe in God, that He is the master of the universe, that there is no other power in the universe other than Him, and that He is good and does good. And that everything that happens to us is for the good. All right. So everything that we're looking at, we have to start from that premise. Okay. Ainod Milfado. So God is that there's nothing other than him. Shepe will show, which means Shain Shum Kafaolam, Shitelo Yokole Asot Mashu Negdoy Bharash. There is no other power in the world which has the ability to do anything against his will. And he goes on to say what we touched on last week. This includes the Yat Sahara, this includes the Sitra Akwa, this includes all those aspects within ourselves. They actually do not have the power to do anything against his will. And the Baal Shem Tov goes on to say, and it's actually <coughs> on page two, okay? Vizel, on page two, top of the page, second column. Kamosha told, Kamosha about Baal Shem Tov Omer, Whoever says that there is anything other power in the world, if there's any other power in the world, okay, that is Kipot, or whatever name you want to call it, okay, there's so many names for the other side, okay, the Sitra Ahwa, the Kipot, the Satan, the, the Yet Sahara, I mean, you name it, it's got plenty of names, all right. Anybody who says there's any other power in the world, that there's a reality to the Kipot in that sense. This person is in the category of serving other gods. This is very strong language indeed. I mean, it really is strong language. Because we've all been taught from infancy to do what the Yetzir Tov says, and the Yetzir Hara is this negative side of us, Okay, which is given a reality. And now he's saying, no, it isn't. It has no reality at all. It's God's messenger, but it's not got any power of its own. Okay, God uses messengers, all right? He uses Torah teachers. He uses the Yetzir Hara within us, but these are his messengers. They have no power to act on any individual basis of their own at all. He Because it's not the thought of blasphemy. We talked about the negative thoughts last week. It's not via the thought of blasphemy that he does the transgression. Okay. Only if he thinks there is any other domain or power other than God. Okay. There's a fascinating letter um, by Rabbi Ashlag um, on the whole of the exile in Egypt. And the whole of the exile in Egypt, he says, was so long as they believed that the Egyptians were enslaving them, they were in exile. Until they came to the understanding that it wasn't Egyptians enslaving them, it was God who put them in that position. That was when the Pu'ula began. But they kept falling after that. They kept, sorry? Falling back into the slave head. They kept, it was, yes, it was forwards and backwards. Yes, that's true. That's absolutely true. But this was what he explained. He says, so long as they thought that the Egyptians were enslaving them, then they were enslaved. And when, when they came to the understanding that it wasn't the Egyptians at all, it was everything was coming from God. And how do we know this from? When it says, mm -hmm. okay, and the king of Egypt died, what's the continuation of the sentence? You mean to say that all that time they didn't cry out to God? Okay, what happened? Just after when the king of Egypt dies, then the cry goes up. All right, what happened all the rest of the 200 and something years? 
because as so long as the king of Egypt, which was the Yetzahara, the king of the, the Egypt within us, okay, so long as we consider the, the Yetzahara within us as king, okay, then we're not connected with God. We're, we're, we're actually denying God in the world. The moment we let go and we say, listen, God, it's all coming from you. Everything's coming from you, including my negative stuff. That's the beginning of a and, and then they, they sighed and they climbed up to God. Okay. So here we go. Below old. We go back to him, page bet, uh, second column, uh, second cover. Not only this. And a Mishal Meshiesh Adam was shut this next month. But whoever says that a person has a domain of his own, saying that he himself didn't want to. Ray man to everyone, do you hear? No. How do we get her attention? Hi. <laughs> We send kisses. <laughs> okay. Maybe she hears us. Yes, I hear you. Oh, we don't. We're not asking you. I love you. <laughs> we want the teacher. <laughs> You're right, I'm not the teacher. And uh, you're a great much teacher. To say. You're a great teacher. <laughs> but I, we're, we're supposed to be in a class now, no? Yes. Okay, there we have it. Uh, oh, wow. Do you think she finished? There are only three of us here. Well, they started the recording in progress again after they stopped it. Okay, so let's try to find her. Okay, view. Gallery. Uh, she's not on. Sipora, huh. Ray, mm -hmm. Janice. Okay, that's the answer. Lots of love to you, ladies. <laughs> God bless. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go to sleep. It's almost uh, almost 27 minutes into the lecture, but I'm tired. What? Like what? five in the morning here. What did you say? A quarter of seven? What happens? Uh, it's five in the morning. It's four, four fifty-seven. Now it's four fifty-eight. My time. So I'm gonna go to sleep. Oh, you're in America. Wonderful. Da, 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 America. Da, 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 da. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy, but come back well. And Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, dear.